On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me the one and only literary lady. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm that literary lady, and I want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in to the twelfth days of Christmas. It is my hope that you found the podcast enjoyable, entertaining, and that you learned something or even made new connections. I'd also like to thank our special guests, Angel Guerrero, Justin Scott Parr, Janet K. Holling, Tanya the Jury Lady Joyner, Shannon Simply Unique Nicole, Brian K. McNeil, Tracy Darity, Dr. Lily Jenkins, Donna Hill, William Lee, and Pat O.R.J. Walker. Now, here on this 12th day of Christmas, on this very day of Christmas, I pray that we all remember the true meaning of Christmas and remember the symbolism of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please remember those less fortunate than us, and always remember there is someone that's always worse off than you. Remember, gratefulness is the new black. Before I end the 2012 Days of Christmas podcast, I'd like to read you an excerpt from my upcoming title, 27 Flagship Code for my new Tommy Lane Christian Thriller series. This is due out on February 15th, and I hope you all enjoy. Lucian Guillory looked one last time in the mirror. He had to make sure he looked the part and that the book, the board took him serious. The prison reform armory had provided him with a black suit, a white shirt, a dark tie, and a pair of size 13 dress shoes. In the presence of prison, prison guards, Lucian had shaved his face clean and cut his 10-inch dreadlocks. His black and gray hair was now short and professional. He couldn't remember the last time he'd worn a suit or looked this good outside his prison garb. Still got it, he thought to himself. Lucian stood five foot eight, and although he was considered short in most superficial circumstances, he carried his height well, and at 155 pounds, he was thin but all muscle. His light-skinned and coy smile always assured he'd have no problem with the ladies. Lucian's parents had separated and resided in Atlanta, Georgia. His father, a police officer, his mother disabled and retired, Lucian had it that she practiced witchcraft. And although Lucian was close to his mother, he and his father didn't see eye to eye and hadn't talked in years. Lucian can remember the last time he'd seen his father. Shortly after he was incarcerated, Mr. Guillory paid Lucian a visit to tell him not to expect any future visits and to plan on never seeing him again. As a matter of fact, Lucian can remember his father's last words to him. You're dead to me, and leave your mother be. With that, Lucian's father walked away, never to see his son again. As if he wasn't already bitter, watching his father walk away from, the, from him left Lucian sure that one day he would seek revenge on his father. Unfortunately, Lucian would never get that chance. His father was killed two years later in a gang initiation gone wrong. The gang, inducted, the gang inductee had no idea he was robbing a police officer's house, and he had no idea that Mr. Guillory was at home. Mr. Guillory surprised the robber. He got off one shot, and so did the robber. In an odd turn of events, the two gun-toting black men counseled each other out. When news reached the Colorado Department of Corrections in Lyman, Lucian was the least bit phased. Poetic justice is what he called it. Now as Lucian stood in the mirror, he thought what he'd once do what he'd do once he smelled freedom. He swore to get a double bacon cheeseburger with a side of fries and a milkshake from Burger King, his favorite. The next thing he'd do, make sure he'd seek revenge on the people who helped to prosecute him. To him, that included everyone from the judge to the jury and those who testified against him. This time, he would make sure he didn't get caught. Today was his appeals hearing. He was sure after the hearing he'd be a free man. He'd spent several years in this prison cell accused of stabbing a woman 22 times in his car. He didn't deny his crime, but he was going to make sure the American judicial system followed its own rules. No one said it was fair, but it was the law. He slicked his mustache one last time and smiled at himself in the mirror. He looked around his six-by-eight cell, the hard bed and toilet that he could easily touch from that bed, and what had been his belongings for the last 15 years. Jet centerfolds donned his walls, and on the only shelf in his cell were tons of law books and the Bible. He grabbed the Bible and tucked it under his arm. No, he would not miss this place at all. 
Let's go, Guillory, a heavily armed security guard with a deep voice said. He stopped and turned to look at the cage he'd called home for so long. If I ever see you again, it'll be too soon. With that, three security guards made handcuffed him and escorted him from the prison cell. I hope you will enjoy reading this book as much as I enjoyed writing it, and I hope you enjoy reading these the uh, installments that are to come. And I just want to take this time to say from Yolanda M. Johnson Bryant, that literary lady, Bryant Consulting, and Literary Wonders Media Group, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you all for your support.